Now, Carl Rogers was a psychotherapist who believed that that the client was the most important person and had to develop what he called a client-centered therapy. The therapist was not to tell the client what to do, but rather the client should learn how to control his or her own behavior. He established a warm and positive and acceptant, accepted atmosphere in which he was able to empathize with his clients and sense their thoughts and feelings. Now, when he translated this to education, he was proposing the idea that the classroom become learner-centered, that the teacher acts as a facilitator. The teacher helps the student to explore new ideas about their lives, their schoolwork, their relationship with others, and their interaction with society. Letting students vent their emotion productively helps them to participate in the learning uh, experience effectively. So, for example, if I was to teach maths, uh, I used to believe that if I, especially when I was, okay, let's let's take this back. When I was a young teacher, so every now and then you get new students to complain. And what do we do? We silence the complaint. We ask people, stop thinking about it, stop talking about it, let's get back to work. And we, we, we go through the rituals, emphasizing the rituals and start forcing people to get into the game. Then I realized that when I reflect on my own learning, there were ups and downs. My emotion for certain subtopics, I had, I naturally associated with certain topics, and I naturally disassociated with certain topics. And then, as I got into uh, more experience in the teaching, I started allowing space for students to vent their feelings and emotions on certain issues. And what I realized was that it suddenly became a life and everybody started chipping in and, and throwing in their emotions and feelings to certain topics. There was in, in any typical class, there were always almost three sides to it. There were people who had almost no emotions either way. You were people who were for the certain ideas and there were people who were disengaged and were totally frustrated. They were not getting it. But what happened was we brought to the brought out to the light that it is okay to feel what you are what you are feeling because you are not the only one and once you accept that certain topics are challenging and everyone else is facing it you begin to accept that, that, that this idea is challenging and you are not the only one and once emotionally you're comforted then the learning kicks in because now you feel much more you become you are part of a herd I, I, or a tribe you know, the herd mentality, oh, I'm not the only one who's here and we all can do this together kind of thing. So from this atmosphere, environment, the, the chart that I'm presenting to you in front has a role to play. See, the more uh, acceptance, the, if you start accepting things and you start expressing them, then you become less defensive, then you're open to new ideas, then you become better aware of your ability. The fact that you have more ability and awareness of your ability, you are able to accept more new things. So this becomes a spiraling, uh, spiral upwards kind of expansion. So allowing students to express their or vent their feeling, and if it's done correctly, it could be really a positive uh, experience. Arthur Combs, on the other hand, believed that how a person perceives himself or herself is the most important and the, and the basic purpose of teaching is to help each student develop a positive self-concept. The role of a teacher is to facilitate, encourage, to develop his or her student's self-perception. Uh, self, uh, okay? And Combs talked about six characteristics of a good teacher. They are to be well informed about their subject. They are sensitive and to the feelings of their students and colleagues. They believe that students can learn. They have a positive self-concept. They believe in helping all students do their best. And they use many different methods of instruction. Now, let's go through this. Because your perception about yourself determines the way you in position yourself in an environment. Your position in the environment will determine the kind of input you will get. And the kind of input you get will predetermine the kind of learning you get. 
right? So if you are, you have a very good self-esteem, you position yourself in the center of things, you have so much a diverse enriching and uh, input coming in from all sides, you have an excellent learning at, uh, experience. But you have a low self-impression, you're always in the margin of things, you, you step aside, you always uh, roam around the peripheral of things, you just pick things up occasionally, so the learning experience will be so much different. So this is what uh, Arthur Combs was of talking about. Now let's go quickly go through the six stages that he, he proposed that a good teacher has. A very well informed teacher about the subject. So now this is really important. Particularly uh, I find uh, this very profound for primary school teachers. See many people believe that if you are a primary school teacher, you really need to be slightly partially literate. That's good enough. Because you are just teaching the alphabets, you are just teaching a few nursery rhymes, and, and you are measured by the content you deliver. Actually, that's not true. A teacher, a well-informed teacher is not so much uh, measured by the content that, that they, uh, they deliver, but how they, uh, are their awareness of their content situated in the bigger picture. This is true too. I mean, if you are teaching, uh, you could be teaching uh, um, mechanics, to a group of students, you may be very well informed within the parameter or the epistemology of your mechanics uh, content. But the point is, if you do not know how mechanics is related to the grand scheme of things in engineering, in, in, in all the other stock medicine, in all the other structural science, you really can't inspire students. Your subject will be really dry because you can't interrelate how this contract is to that. So you don't have this very well informed, you're not well informed about your subject. So please try to draw this, uh, draw your mind away. Oh, just because you know your syllabus, you are well informed. No, to be really well informed is to, obviously is to know what you are going to teach, but also to know what you are going to teach and how they are situated in the grand scheme of things. The second uh, characteristic is they are sensitive and feeling to students and colleagues. Now, most importantly, I would like to cover the second point and third point together. They believe that students can learn. Now, we are all in teaching, right? We are not here to deliver content. I mean, although that's what we spend most of the time, we are here to teach a student. So the point is the student should be the center of focus. We should say or do whatever we take so that the student is enlightened at the end of the day. So many people tend to miss this point. Uh, I used to hear stories like, oh, teaching is such a boring job because after 25 years, you're still teaching the same thing. No, teaching is not a boring job. Tw after 25 years, you have taught 25 different sets of students with different emotion, different feeling, different intelligence. You have inspired 25 set of cohorts of students to achieve their maximum potential within your subject domain. Okay. Now the fourth one, have a positive self-concept. Recently there was a lot of talk about how uh, Finland has been very successful in teacher training. Finland uh, has the best uh, primary and secondary school system in the world. They, they, they outdo almost every other country in most of the standardized testing for maths and science and uh, reading and writing, I think. Now, how do they do this? Very simple. Teaching is the most paid profession in Finland. Everybody has a master's before you even apply for a teaching position. The best minds apply for this post and the best people are trained with best approaches and they produce the highest quality teachers. Now, they really have a very positive self-concept of themselves. So when they walk into class, you are really talking about the cream of the population. Unlike, for example, in Malaysia, we have times of in our history, we have used teaching to solve our unemployment problem. In fact, I don't know whether the program still exists, but it's good for you to do some research. What we did was we took unemployed uh, graduates, sent them for one year training, and we put them in uh, into teaching. Now, many of the uh, unemployed graduates are unemployable. You know, there are two things. One, I am fully competent. I have all the necessary competencies. It's just that there is not enough space in the market force to absorb me. Two, I don't have the competencies. I can't cope. I have all the other issues that doesn't give me an opportunity to be employed. 
and then you're putting me in a school setting and asking me to teach young minds what to become like myself it's a very important question you need to ask and then the last one is the methods of instruction you must be fully aware that you are not teaching to a homogeneous group they all come from different backgrounds they have different styles they have emotional baggage I mean the more complex society you work in the more complex the emotional baggage is and how your different approaches methods are you, that you are you have so many things in tip of your fingers that you can deliver any one time any one content in, in three different ways